Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiana and this is a segment on my channel that I'm going to call Untold History. Um, uh, the segment on my channel, we talk about unknown history. Um, last video, we talked about the Red Summer of 1919. This video, we will be talking about a little person that is unknown, who is known, uh, if you search her up, she's known as the mother of California's civil rights. And arguably, she is the first self-made Black female millionaire. Yes, she is arguably the first one before Madam C.J. Walker. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And her name is Mary Ellen Pleasant. Okay. So, Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant, she didn't want nobody in her business. And so, I do sincerely apologize, Miss Pleasant. Okay. I do sincerely apologize, Miss Pleasant. Um, you'll see why I was, I was, uh, I'm apologizing. Okay. Uh, I do sincerely apologize, Miss Pleasant. I was, I, I've been, I've been nosy. I've been nosy. I've been nosy. Okay. And did some research. And the reason why I said Miss, Miss, Miss Pleasant didn't want nobody in her business. Okay. She told a lot of lies. Not, not even lies. Okay. I, 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 I. Apologize for using the word lies. She told a lot of stories. Okay, she told a lot of stories that contradict themselves a little bit, which I can only imagine. She was like, I don't want people to know my business. So I'm a I'm a I'ma rearrange some stuff here and there. Rearrange some stuff here and there, but everything will be Everything will be the 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 truth, but the time that it happened it might be a bit. And so I fully respect that. I fully respect that. You hear that, Miss Pleasant? I fully respect that. Okay. Um, but I what I did do in order to keep a concise timeline, I do have this whiteboard here. Okay, with the timeline. And we will go over it, okay, at the end of the video, video for a review, basic review of Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant's life. Uh, I initially had this video planned um, for February for Black History Month, but February took a toll on me. I'm 23 and I'm breaking down, okay? I sprained my thumb, life was hitting at me. I Look at my face. You can just tell. Look, look at that. You just tell. I was going through shit <laughs> in February. Um, but nonetheless, I do have planned videos for Black History Month. And some of these videos do align with what March is, which is Women History Month. So, yippee, look here. We have a woman uh, who just happens to be Black. Which is important. And she is Black. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. You're going to spend three minutes talking about other stuff. But let's go ahead and get started on this video. So, first things first. Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant was born Miss Mary Ellen Williams on August 19th, either 1814 or 1815. As we know, of the time period, Black people's birth records weren't really together. They weren't really recorded. And so, her birthday has always been the same. It's always been 1819. <sighs> I mess up. I mess this up every single time. Her birthday has always been the same. It's always been August 19th, but 1814 or 1815, it's kind of debatable, depending on who you ask. Okay. So it's also debated whether or not she was born a slave or she was born free um her parentage is pretty unknown some stories claim that she was born born a bond servant to an abolition family um the quaker family the hussies uh that we, we were we will get to in just a second uh, some stories say that she was born a slave in georgia or virginia um 
Others claim that she was a child of a voodoo saint uh, or a particular voodoo priestess from the Caribbean. Some say that she was a child of a Hawaiian merchant who was, or a wealthy Virginian. Um, Miss Pleasant herself said that she was born free in Philadelphia uh, on Barley Street. And um, we can only take her word for that. So, however the case may be, whether she was born free or not, uh, when she was young, she was living with this Quaker family named the Hussies. Okay. Um, the Hussies, they were abolition family. They were abolitionists. Um, and they lived in Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. Okay. While she was with the Hussies, she worked uh, as a clerk in the family store. There she learned how to run a business and entrepreneurship um, from the local black community and uh, from the matriarch of the Hussies, the grandmother. Okay, she stayed with them. Um, like I said, their Quaker family were greatly involved in the abolition movement. So she was, while she was young, she was inducted into the anti-slavery society in Nantucket. Okay. Um, but we do know around the 1840s, she did become a tailor's assistant in Boston, uh, where it is speculated she may have met her first husband there, not quite sure, but around 1840, she did meet and marry her first husband, James Smith, okay? And Mr. Smith, he was a wealthy mulatto, a contractor, abolitionist, and merchant from Cuba. If you do not know what a mulatto is, mulatto, mulatto was what people called um, people that were mixed race. So if you were black and you were white, you were called a mulatto. Um, so yes, Mr. Smith, he was a mulatto. So then they married and um, now Miss Mary, Miss Mary Ellen Williams is now Miss Mary Ellen Smith. Okay. And together they became involved in the Boston abolition movement and worked the underground railroad. Okay. Um, while they were working on the underground railroad, you know, they helped enslaved people escape North and eventually moved into Nova Scotia in Canada. Um, we think around the time Mr. Smith, he died uh, in 1844, but some reports will say that he may have died in 1848. It's not quite sh clear because uh, we're just gonna say, we're just gonna take Miss Pleasant's uh, account of events that he died around 1844 and she married her second husband around 1848, okay? And we do know there is a birth record though of 1845 of her having a daughter named Elizabeth Lizzie J. Smith. Um, some people say it's unclear of who the father was. There's a little confusion, but I will say I will take Miss Miss Mary Ellen's word and say that James Smith was the father if she was born in 1845 um, and her husband died in 1844. Now, her daughter does not appear in much of her um, story. I will think maybe after, you know, her husband died, you know, she gave birth shortly after. She probably gave her daughter away simply because she probably didn't think she could do parenthood by herself, which is understandable. Okay. Um, but anyway, after that, that's just my speculation. But anyway, um, after Jane Smith died, she was left an inheritance of $45,000. Y'all will say, uh, y'all might think $45,000 wasn't a lot. It was like, you gotta include inflation with that, <laughs> all right? Um, it is known that he did leave uh, specific instructions to do with that money and to put it towards the abolitionist movement um she did do that but some will say she probably didn't do 
uh, the whole $45,000. I would say, I agree with that. I gotta live. So they can have, what, $35,000 and I will keep $10,000, but I'm not giving that whole $45,000 away because, again, I gotta live. I'm sorry for my hair. My hair is a mess. Anyway, um, uh, so, but out of the case, she did remain involved in the movement for several years. Um, so soon after Jameson's dies, she uh, marries John James Pleasance. Um, again, that is around 1848. Um, John James Pleasant is a person that worked for James Smith as an overseer. Um, he was a former slave. So they spent together for like 30 years. They were, they were married for 30 years. Um, now, while she is involved in the Underground Railroad, helping people escape north and into Canada and things like that, she did become a hunted slave rescuer with increased intention, particularly in New Orleans. Um, fun fact though, okay. Uh, Mary Ellen Pleasant and Madame Marie Laveau, they did, the voodoo queen, yes, the voodoo queen of New Orleans, they did know each other, okay. They were really good friends. Um, they met and talked many times. It's supposedly rumored that um, Madame Laveau is the one who taught Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant how to become a voodoo saint herself. So y'all see why I was over here apologizing at the beginning of the video. Okay, y'all see why I was over here apologizing. All right. Um, so like I said, Miss Mary Ellen, she didn't want nobody in her business. Um, so this is where a lot of the stuff for the events gets thrown around in different years that don't really make sense. So I, I, again, like I said, it was most likely to keep people out of her business. Um, so it's said, so according to her, she was in San Francisco in 1849, but there's evidence that she was also in New Orleans. So I like to say, I like to say she was probably moving back for before she made this official move to San Francisco. Um, just say, just keep her, just keep this on her good side. She was probably moving back and forth, traveling back and forth between San Francisco and New, and New Orleans um, because she was a known person. She was, she was a wanted person. So I would think that was the case. Um, but officially, official records, she was uh she moved to san francisco around april 1852. okay while she was in in san francisco uh, she worked as a cook a housekeeper and she invested her earnings from these jobs into stock and money markets um she also let miners and businessmen borrow money from her at a 10 percent interest so basically like she was her own little private little bank um, she also gained a lot of knowledge from rich businessmen and became a skilled investor. Um, she started many businesses catering to the gold rush. So if y'all did not know, from the same time, civil war is going on in the South and in the East and everything like that, you know, states are succeeding and things like that. Um, you got people moving West, <laughs> finding gold. So the gold rush is happening at the exact same time that the states are supposedly fighting for state rights. State rights to do what? Exactly. Um, <laughs> so this is where the claim of her being the first self-made millionaire comes into play, all right? Uh, it is believed when she moved to San Francisco that she had $15,000 worth of gold coins. $15,000 worth of gold coins in that year's money, okay? 
in today's inflation, that's half a million dollars, specifically 540,669 dollars and 23 cents. A half a million dollars. She traveled to San, she moved to San Francisco with that. Half a million dollars. Okay. Um, and like I said, Miss 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 Pleasant, she had a business mind, okay? You look her up, her official occupation is capitalist. Okay? She had a business mind. Uh, she was smart and she exchanged $1,000 worth of gold for silver through Panama. And this was when the value of gold was high, okay? She then deposited the silver into the bank and take out more gold to possess a in increase her wealth slowly and increase her wealth okay so by 1875 she did a massive fortune she was a millionaire by 1875 she had a fortune okay um while she was also doing all this you know all these other businesses she also helped establish the bank of california so um another uh story that she claims that is true that we just have to mention here is that between the years of 1857 and 1859 she provided financial assistance to john brown um but we have never found claims of these to be true we hadn't found the evidence yet for this to be true um but we just gonna say that she did because again i don't want to i don't want no bad voodoo on me by the spirit on the other side i feel like she's watching me right now so i'm a little scared <laughs> okay um so after her move to california her her second husband no longer appeared in reports uh, about her life his involvement in, in it was kind of unclear until his death in 1877. Um, but supposedly he was like a sea cook, so he was out in sea often during their 30 year marriage. So, so take that as, as you will. All right. Anyway, while she was in California um, to protect herself, because again, she was a wanted woman, uh, she went by Mrs. Ellen Smith. Um, and she was a philanthropist okay uh, she used her money to help uh, bring escaped slaves to San Francisco and you know helping them get started in new homes and jobs um, she also aided free black people who have been illegally enslaved while in California so you know these gold rushers they come in from the south and they move in west find gold may bring in their slaves with them and as soon you know basically telling them yeah you're still a slave even though we're in california yeah you're, you're still a slave when in reality as soon as they cross that border baby they were free they were free people and so she helped them you know um she also helped young women doesn't matter if they were black or white uh from being sex trafficked and because you know they were they were easy targets for explorative men. Um, she became a pi like I said, she became the pioneer of civil rights in California. Okay, she was involved in two key court decisions. In 1863, she was involved in a court case that earned Black people the right to have their testimonies heard in California. Um, you know, before then they they were not taking no testimonies from the Black people to help any any type of court case. Doesn't matter if it would have helped or not helped anybody. No, black girl, you're not getting, you're not gonna be heard. Um, also in 1866, she organized a sit-in on San Francisco streetcars because black people were denied passage. Um, so basically she was a one woman social service during this entire time she was in California. Um, so 1866, we are heading into the reconstruction era. Um, 
she helped in racial discrimination on the San Francisco uh, streetcars by suing, you know, two companies, uh, the North Beach uh, Company and the Mission Railroad Company for denying service to black people. Uh, they paid Miss Mary Ellen $500 in damages. And of course they tried to appeal this decision in court and it reached all the way to the California State Supreme Court. Uh, but in 1868, this, was, this decision was upheld, okay? Now, a woman like Mary Ellen Pleasant, a badass woman that helps just about anyone that would need her help <sighs> during this time it just wouldn't be met without scandal okay it it you have to expect some type of scandal and some of these rumors these are just rumors okay some of these rumors include that her boarding houses were fronts for whorehouses that she was a madame selling these girls out of her boarding houses um but it really her life really became ingrained in scandal um after becoming officially known as a housekeeper for thomas bell and his wife Teresa. okay um let's before we get into Bell versus Pleasant, let's really break down the situation. So, again, she's working her businesses, getting contacts, and things like that. And she meets a man named Thomas Bell. Together, they invest and build a mansion, 30-room mansion. Um, it's no longer standing, so I wish I had pictures of it. But beautiful 30-room mansion together. Uh his money and her money so officially they are the owners to this mansion her name is on the deed to this mansion okay but she worked uh, as the as the mansion's housekeeper um i would say more like a house manager than a housekeeper but her title was housekeeper um so when she moved into the mansion, uh, there were rumors that she was uh, Belle's mistress, mistress um, because her duties exceeded the typical jobs of a housekeeper, uh, like her name being on a deed, and she kept up with the house's finances and things like that. It was like people were like, uh, "Housekeeper." Is that what a housekeeper do? <laughs> so, of course, so, like, that's what I say. Like, she was more like a house manager than a keeper, right? Uh, it was also, so, these rumors were going around, like, newspapers. They were printing that she stole money and used the money to help black people or, you know, use it for her own personal gain. When reality... She ain't still no money. She never she never stole money. All of the money that she had was hers that she earned herself. And of course, nobody could really, you know, understand that a black woman could gain so much fortune. But yes. Um then it got a little bit worse because Thomas Bell, he died. And he he didn't just die like a typical death like he fell from an upper floor window of the mansion so of course now people are accusing her of murder um now people are accusing her of murder they're thinking oh she did it for the money she did it for the money she did it for the money but then you know when his will was read and she wasn't left any money they were like oh okay well i guess she didn't I have a reason to murder him after that so i guess she didn't do it like uh yeah duh she didn't do it it's like now these rumors though but these rumors were uh revamped though they were revamped um 
after Teresa Bell, the widow, she turned and accused Miss Pleasant of pushing Thomas out of the window. Um, so she accused Mary Ellen of pushing Thomas out of the window and also stealing money. And this is her claim to, um, to the reason why she, she stole this money. Uh, so again, like I said, Thomas and Mary Ellen, they compiled money and built, um, the Belle Pleasant mansion and Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant, she was primarily in charge of the finances. Like I said, she was basically the house manager, okay? Uh, but whenever Teresa Bell wanted to make a purchase, she had to go to Mary Ellen and ask her for money and, and she would consider it. She, you know, she would consider the purchase. I'm sorry of that break, um, you know, reading my notes here. She would consider the purchase, and if it seemed excessive, Mary Ellen was like, nah, I'm not giving you the money for that. So, uh, so, Teresa, she was like, oh, I'm gonna go to Thomas about it. And she bring it up to Thomas, and then the decision will be basically in his hands. So, after Thomas's death happened, Teresa was left, you know, mentally and emotionally unstable. And so she's, she was like, she was making claims left and right. She was like, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen has been manipulating and stealing from Thomas and, and she murdered him. Okay. This eventually does go to court, but it was, they were unable to find any proof of any of these claims that Teresa Bell was making. Cause again, Mary Ellen Pleasant was rich on her own <laughs> and like her name was on the D because she bought the house herself. And so they couldn't prove the accusations of that she murdered uh, Thomas Bell or that she stole money. So, but what they could, again, could, so they couldn't really find the evidence of that because again the bell pleasant for, fortune after kind of building this house and putting all this money together it was kind of hard to separate it so but they could prove that mary did pay for the mansion's construction herself like she built the house it is her house her name is on the deed and they could prove that so so um so she was not she was not found guilty or convicted of murder or or theft but even though she was you know accused of it and with these accusations especially that was coming from the widow this it did tarnish her reputation uh, reputation throughout you know the city but I really don't think that that truly hindered anything going for uh forward truly because you will see how they make up for it. Um so it so after you know these court cases and things like that, Miss um Miss Mary Ellen she was either forced out of the home or she just moved out to you know prevent tensions further tensions between her and Teresa. um but she was 85 years old when she did leave this the mansion when she did leave her home um you know but despite the the property being hers uh, she did move into a six bedroom apartment on webster street and the Bell kids, Thomas and Teresa kids, they did come and visit her often. They they were very friendly with her. Um, they they called her auntie actually. So 
but so she moved into the six bedroom apartment she lived there for quite a time until she could no longer live by herself um because of all these legal entanglements and having to go back to court you know prove her case and things like that uh, by 1899 Mary Ellen Pleasant she did have to claim bankruptcy um, but even after you know she claimed bankruptcy and then a couple of years later she did die uh, discussion involving the Bell estate never ceased um, like the it continued to be rumors and talked about for years after even after the settlements and that she was not guilty of anything uh they still talked about it now um miss mary ellen pleasant she did become seriously ill um she did become seriously ill towards the end of her life despite the scandals like i said she was showered with get well cards and acknowledged for her charity throughout san francisco um Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant, she did die of old age. So she did, she was sick, but her cause of death was old age. Um, she died of old age in San Francisco on January 4th, 1904. Okay. Um, like I said, she had a six bedroom apartment and she lived there until she could not. Um, she quote unquote died in poverty um, but she really just lived with her friend, Olive Sherwood, and they became such a good friends over the years that she knew her. And so when she could not live by herself anymore, she ended up moving in with the Sherwood family. And when she died, she was buried in the Sherwood family plot in Napa, California. Okay. Um, now... You may ask, well, what happened to the mansion? The 30 bedroom mansion built and owned by this, by this woman. It was torn down. It was torn down. And I'm not saying that's racist. A 30 bedroom mansion built and owned by a black female billionaire is racist. But I'm just saying it is not right. Is that right? Like, it's not. Like, you tore down this house and it 100% would have been a historical marker. Anyway. So. Uh, little things that happened after she did die, though. In 1976, Memorial Park in San Francisco was established in Mary Ellen Pleasant's memory. And this park is is where the site of the Pleasant Bell Mansion was. So um, if you go to San Francisco and you go to Memorial Park, that is exactly where her house was. Um, in 20, June 11, 2011, her grave site was marked with a metal sculpture and it was dedicated to her. Um, so basically that was the life of Mary Ellen Pleasant. Um, now if you need a concise summary of what happened during this woman's life, I have it right here in this timeline. All right. First things first, let's review. August 19th, either 1814 or 1815, she was born Mary Ellen Williams, okay? Around 1840, she met her first husband, okay? About 1844, James Smith, her first husband, dies, okay? It said 1845, Elizabeth Lizzie J. Smith was, birth record was recorded, okay? About 1848, though, I almost fell. <laughs> 1848, though, she marries her second husband. Okay? We're just going to say in 1852, 
it was official move to San Francisco. Okay. Um, 1863, a court case for black testimonies was done. In 1866, the streetcar sit-in was done. 1868, the Supreme Court upholds the decision um, of Mary Ellen being in the right of this the lawsuit. Okay. By 1875, her fortune was amassed. Okay. She was officially declared rich. Okay. By 1877, her second husband, John, he dies. Okay. Oh, I forgot to say, 1857 to 1859, supposedly she gave money to John Brown. Okay. Now, in 1899, she did declare bankruptcy. Uh, 1904, she did pass away January 4th, 1904. In 1976, Memorial Park was dedicated to her by the African American Historical and Cultural Society. And then in 2011, uh, the sculpture was uh, dedicated in March on her gravesite. So that was the concise life of Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant. Uh, again, arguably the first black female self-made millionaire. Um, you tell me whether or not she was. I say she was. Because, uh, again, if we're going to go back, we're going to go back. We're going to go back here. Talk about this inflation rate. So, right? Just real quick. Just real quick. Okay. The inflation rate of the dollar between 1850 and 2022 was about 2.11%, leading to its imp price increase of $3,504 and three of uh, three thousand five hundred and four and forty point forty six percent. So think about the numbers that I gave you. Forty five thousand dollars. Okay, fifteen thousand dollars. If fifteen thousand dollars was 500 was was a half a million dollars forty five thousand dollars forty five thousand dollars in 1844 when her first husband died she she was a millionaire then to be quite honest to be quite to be quite honest she was a millionaire then in 1844 when he died she had the money then but but it was it was officially calculated in 1875 to actually to be declared like a fortune was there it was amassed there it was calculated in 1875 but she was she had money <laughs> she had money back then in 1844 when that first husband died so again you would tell me I said she was. Um, next video uh, is coming soon. You probably will be seeing this exact same shirt <laughs> in the next video. Don't judge me because I'm, I'm, I'm recording these back to back. But until next time, y'all have a great rest of your day.